1. In Azure Table Storage, each row in a table must be uniquely identified by which two components. Each correct answer presents pan of the solution. Note. Each correct selection is worth one point. A. A timestamp. B. A range. C. A row key. D. A partition key. In Azure Table Storage, each row in a table must be uniquely identified by two components. A partition key and a row key. So, the correct answers are. C. A. Row key. D. A. Partition key. Explanation. Row key. Option C. In Azure Table Storage. The row key uniquely identifies a row within a partition. It is used to quickly locate a particular row within a partition. Partition key. Option D. The partition key is another component used to identify a partition within a table. Together with the row key, it forms a unique identifier for each row in the table. The other options, a timestamp, option A, and a range, option B, are not components used to uniquely identify rows in Azure Table Storage. Therefore, they are not correct answers. 2. You have a banking application that transfers money into and out of accounts. Of which type of solution is this as an example? A. Extract Transform and Load ETL B. A. Data Warehouse C. Online Analytical Processing OLAP D. Online Transaction Processing, OLTP The banking application described, which involves transferring money into and out of accounts, is an example of an online transaction processing, OLTP, solution. Option D. Online Transaction Processing, OLTP, is the correct choice. Explanation OLTP systems are designed to manage transaction-oriented applications, where users are involved in real-time transactions, such as transferring money between accounts, making purchases, or updating records. In an OLTP system, the emphasis is on quick, real-time transaction processing, maintaining data integrity, and supporting concurrent access by multiple users. ETL, option A, Data Warehouse, option B, and OLAP, option C, are typically associated with analytical processing rather than transactional processing. They are used for tasks like data integration, storage, and analysis which are different from the real-time transaction processing described in the scenario. 3. You have a SQL query that combines customer data and order data. The query includes calculated columns. You need to create a database object that would allow other users to rerun the same SQL query. What should you create? A. A scalar function. B. A table. C. An index. D. A view. To allow other users to rerun the same SQL query without having to rewrite it, you should create a view. So, the correct choice is. D. A view. Explanation. A view in SQL is a virtual table based on the result set of a select statement. It contains rows and columns just like a real table but has no physical storage. By creating a view with your SQL query, you provide other users with a way to access the data and calculated columns without needing to understand or rewrite the query itself. 
Views provide a layer of abstraction, simplifying access to complex data structures and calculations, while maintaining data security and integrity. Scalar functions, option A, are used to perform a single scalar value operation and may not be suitable for representing an entire query. Creating a new table, option B, would duplicate the data, which may not be necessary or efficient. An index, option C, is used to improve the performance of queries but does not encapsulate the logic of a specific query like a view does. 4. In a fully denormalized database, how is data read and written for a single entity? A. Data is read from a single table and written to a single table. B. Data is read from multiple tables and written to a single table. C. Data is read from a single table and written to multiple tables. D. Data is read from multiple tables and written to multiple tables. In a fully denormalized database, data is read from and written to a single table for a single entity. So, the correct choice is A. Data is read from a single table and written to a single table. Explanation Denormalization involves combining tables and optimizing them for read performance at the expense of some redundancy and increased storage space. In a fully denormalized database, all related data for a single entity is stored within a single table. This eliminates the need for joins and simplifies querying, leading to faster read operations. Writing data involves updating or inserting records into this single table, rather than spreading writes across multiple tables. Options B, C, and D involve operations that would occur in normalized or partially normalized databases, where data is distributed across multiple tables for efficiency and normalization purposes. However, in a fully denormalized database, the focus is on optimizing read operations by consolidating data into a single table. 5. Which Azure Cosmos DB API should you use for a graph database? A. Azure Cosmos DB for Apache Gremlin. B. Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL. C. Azure Cosmos DB for Apache Cassandra. D. Azure Cosmos DB for table. For a graph database in Azure Cosmos DB, you should use A. Azure Cosmos DB for Apache Gremlin. Explanation Azure Cosmos DB supports multiple APIs, each optimized for different data models and access patterns. Apache Gremlin is a query language and traversal framework for graph databases. Therefore, the Azure Cosmos DB API designed for graph databases would be Azure Cosmos DB for Apache Gremlin, option A. Option B, Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL, is a generic option and not specific to graph databases. Options C and D, Azure Cosmos DB for Apache Cassandra, and Azure Cosmos DB for Table, are designed for different data models and are not suitable for graph databases. 6. In an analytical data model, which type of table contains entities that are used to aggregate numeric values, where each entity is represented by a row with a unique key value? A. Bridge. B. Dimension. C. Fact. In an analytical data model, the type of table that contains entities used to aggregate numeric values, with each entity represented by a row with a unique key value, is called a C. 
Fact table Explanation In an analytical data model, a fact table typically contains quantitative data, facts, about a business process or activity. Each row in a fact table represents a specific event or transaction and is associated with one or more dimensions, entities, through foreign keys. Fact tables usually contain numeric values that can be aggregated, summed, averaged, etc., over different dimensions, such as time, geography, or product. Fact tables often have a large number of rows and are typically joined with dimension tables to provide context to the numeric values stored in the fact table. Bridge tables, option A are used in many-to-many -many relationships between dimension tables. Dimension tables, option B, contain attributes, descriptive characteristics, of the entities being analyzed, such as customers, products, or time. 7. What can be used with native notebook support to query and visualize data by using a web-based interface? A. Azure Databricks B. PG Admin C. Microsoft Power BL With native notebook support to query and visualize data using a web-based interface, you can use A. Azure Databricks Explanation Azure Databricks is an Apache Spark-based analytics platform optimized for Azure. It provides native notebook support through tools like Jupyter Notebooks or Databricks Notebooks. These notebooks allow users to write and execute code, such as SQL, Python, or Scala, in an interactive environment, making it easy to query and visualize data. Users can run queries against large data sets, perform data transformations, and create visualizations directly within the notebook interface. While PG Admin, Option B, is a popular PostgreSQL administration and development platform, it does not offer native notebook support for querying and visualizing data. Microsoft Power BI, Option C, is a powerful business analytics tool used to create reports and dashboards. While it offers various visualization capabilities, it does not provide native notebook support for querying data using a web-based interface like Azure Databricks does. 8. Which language is used to define queries in Azure Synapse Data Explorer? A. Bash B. PowerShell C. KQL D. SQL In Azure Synapse Data Explorer, queries are defined using C. KQL Custo Query Language Explanation Azure Synapse Data Explorer, formerly known as Azure Data Explorer, is a fast and highly scalable data exploration service provided by Microsoft Azure. KQL, Custo Query Language, is the query language used to interact with data in Azure Synapse Data Explorer. KQL is specifically designed for real-time data exploration and analytics with syntax optimized for querying large volumes of data quickly and efficiently. While SQL, option D, is a common query language used in many database systems, Azure Synapse Data Explorer primarily utilizes KQL for its data exploration capabilities. Bash, option A, and PowerShell, option B, are scripting languages used for automation and administrative tasks and are not used for defining queries in Azure Synapse Data Explorer. 9. 
which Azure Service provides the highest compatibility for databases migrated from Microsoft SQL Server 2019 Enterprise Edition. A. An Azure SQL Database Elastic Pool. B. Azure SQL Managed Instance. C. Azure Database for MySQL. D. Azure SQL Database. The Azure service that provides the highest compatibility for databases migrated from Microsoft SQL Server 2019 Enterprise Edition is B. Azure SQL Managed Instance Explanation Azure SQL Managed Instance is a fully managed platform as a service. Pause offering for SQL Server databases. It provides near 100% compatibility with SQL Server Enterprise Edition. Azure SQL Managed Instance offers features like instance-level compatibility, which includes support for SQL Server features such as SQL Agent, Linked Servers, and Cross-Database Queries. With Azure SQL Managed Instance, you can easily lift and shift your on-premises SQL Server databases to the cloud with minimal changes required. While Azure SQL Database, Option D, also provides a managed SQL database service, Azure SQL Managed Instance offers a higher level of compatibility, especially for enterprise workloads. Azure SQL Database Elastic Pool, Option A and Azure Database for MySQL, Option C, are not specifically designed for compatibility with SQL Server Enterprise Edition databases. 10. What is the difference between structured data and semi-structured data? A. Structured data has a fixed schema and semi-structured data has a flexible schema. B. Only structured data supports entities. C. Structured data has a flexible schema and semi-structured data has a fixed schema. D. Only structured data supports attributes. The difference between structured data and semi-structured data lies in their schema flexibility. A. Structured data has a fixed schema and semi-structured data has a flexible schema. Explanation Structured data is data that conforms to a well-defined schema, where each data record is organized into fields or columns with a fixed data type. It typically resides in relational databases. Semi-structured data, on the other hand, does not adhere to a strict schema. While it may have some structure, such as key-value pairs or hierarchical formats like JSON or XML, it allows for variation in the structure from one record to another. The fixed schema of structured data enables efficient storage, indexing, and querying but may limit flexibility in handling diverse data types or evolving data requirements. Semi-structured data's flexible schema allows for easier adaptation to changing data formats or adding new fields without requiring alterations to the entire data set. However, it may require additional processing to extract and interpret the data due to its variability. Option B and D are incorrect because entities and attributes are concepts commonly associated with structured data modeling in relational databases and are not exclusive to structured data. Option C is incorrect because it describes the opposite scenario of what is typically understood about structured and semi-structured data schemas.